cut south of the border in South Carolina. Did you ever hear of the old fable of the McFarlane and the whale? Word has it that if you look in the right whale, you'll find Todd McFarlane comics. Hope this is the right whale. Oh my God. Todd McFarlane comics. West Coast Avengers, free Willy and then free Todd. Welcome to my comics lair. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers. Thank you for joining me once again. It is December. What'd you find there, Dave? Micronauts. Micronauts. Like this uh, Quantum Leap. I, I'm, I'm not sure what it says. I'm not good at this game. Quantum Lope. I have finally gotten rid of that Dave Korea guy. I pushed him back out to the San Francisco Bay. I bought a collection this week. So when you're buying a collection from somebody, no matter what the size is, you always want to make sure to look through the books and don't be shy about asking condition. I had uh, met this gentleman virtually and he said, oh, you were the first person to respond to the ad, so let's meet up. And so I drove out to meet up with him to look at the stuff and he had a large storage box as well as a little Tupperware thing. So I started flipping through books. It was pretty interesting because what I have here isn't representative of everything I bought. There was quantity. So first off, Howard the Duck number one. You know Howard the Duck and it's just a great comic. He had six of these and they're all in really good shape. Per almost perfect Defenders King Size Annual number one. I think there were seven of them in there. You don't find books that are 45 years old that look like they just came off the shelf. Another cool Marvel book. This is Marvel Presents Guardians of the Galaxy. Number three, this is the first solo book featuring the Guardians of the Galaxy. I had four of these now. Black Panther number two, the Jack Kirby series from the 70s. Uh, there was four or five of them in there. Uh, not all in great shape, but it's Jack Kirby. This one was kind of funny. Sherlock Holmes from DC Comics, number one. It's the only Sherlock Holmes book that came out. They never continued the series, but I think I have 10 copies of this. So if you're interested in Sherlock Holmes, please let me know. He had some decent books in there, but there was nothing that was like, oh my God, I need to have this. One of the, the, the books that I really liked, uh, not a huge book, but Toxic Avenger number one, Marvel Comics 1991. Toxic Avenger, trauma film, uh, great B horror movie. Anyway, they are making a new Toxic Avenger film coming out. So this book just heated up. Another one that I really did like, and I didn't realize how big of a book it was until I, I looked when I got home, Star Wars number two. From Marvel Comics 1977. I knew this was a pretty big book, but this book features the first appearance of Han, Chewie, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Millennium Falcon, and Greedo, and I think I got six of these. Everybody's favorite Canadian superhero, Captain Canuck 1975 from Cumley Comics. This is the first official Canadian superhero, and it was a Canadian comic book that they exported to the U.S. I have ten of these. And I have six or seven of number two and number three. So contact me, my Canadian friends. I'll hit you up, eh? Moon Knight number one. Also had a Moon Knight number two, number three, and number six. But if you know anything about Moon Knight, not just the schizophrenic Batman of Marvel. And he's got a series coming to Disney Plus starring Oscar Isaac. No, no, no. More importantly, this cover, this comic was illustrated by none other than Bill Sankiewicz. Bill Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz, Bill Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz, Bill Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz, Sankiewicz. And this is a lower grade copy, but that's okay. I have a nicer one in my personal collection, but it was still nice to get a couple of Moon Knights in there from our friend. Sankiewicz. A nice helping of Inhumans number one in here. I think I have four or five copies. Super high grade. Really, really underrated book. The Inhumans are a Jack Kirby creation. They came in during the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four 45 would be the first appearance of the team. Black Bolt, Medusa. Anyway, a few Inhumans number ones. There was a nice helping of Jack Kirby in there. I did get a 2001 Space Odyssey number one. And I was bagging and boarding this last night. And I just happened to open it up just to check it out. It is signed by and dated by letter and inker Mike Royer to EJ. Comically yours, Mike Royer, and it's dated November 13th, 1976. And to round out the Jack Kirby-ness, this one I was super stoked about. Demon number one, the first appearance of Etrigan the Demon, a seldomly well-used character now in the DC universe. Very cool character that I've seen used 
a few times really well. St. Neil Gaiman used him pretty well in Sandman. Books of Magic. So when he's well written, he's a, an interesting, weird character. But designed by Kirby, created by Kirby. And once again, I opened this one up only to find that this one was also signed by Mike Royer to EJ and dated November 13th, 1976. And funny thing about that, that is two years and 364 days before I was born. The reason why I really bought the whole collection, two of the really, really rare old books that he had, I, I managed to make a deal with him, were EC Comics. This is Haunt of Fear number 21, featuring the Crypt Keeper, the Vault Keeper, and the Old Witch. EC Comics, 1950s, pre Comics Code of Authority horror. This book is in actually really good shape for its age. Uh, the paper is known to fall apart on these, and that's why when you find some EC Comics stuff, you just get it. There's a lot to say about these books. They, they feature talent such as uh, Wally Wood and Jack Davis, and Bill Gaines was the mastermind behind most of this stuff. And, and you can do your research, the, the stuff that went down with the Comics Code Authority and Frederick Wortham, fuck you. This stuff is super rare, super collectible. Um, so that's this one. The one I really bought this for. Tales from the Crypt number 24. Tales from the Crypt I grew up knowing as just the HBO horror series, but it starts here with EC Comics. It starts here with uh, some of these legends writing horror and beautiful art, like stuff you don't see anymore. And it's stuff that influenced uh, you know, a guy like Bernie Wrightson, who I absolutely love. When you find the people that you love and you go back and you look at their influences, you, you find a greater love for the stuff that came before it. This one's tough to find, Tales from the Crypt stuff. If you see an original Tales from the Crypt, it's 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 finding real treasure. And so I had to have this. And this is something that um, I will be sending to CGC to get graded, to preserve it, because like I said, these things will fall apart every day. I bought all this stuff the first day. Uh, I was pretty happy with what I got, especially after I saw the conditions of everything and got to look at every book. They were a little dirty, but nothing a, a little microfiber cloth can't fix. So I set up to come look at the rest of his stuff because he had like a 75 pound tub. I went back with Joe. We went to look at everything else, maybe thinking about like if we bought everything else, we could split it. We went through the tub. Uh, the Most of the comics, the regular comics, they weren't that interesting. There was a couple cool books in there. Some of the stuff was really beat up. But I saw something in there that's in my wheelhouse. It's something that I really love. And that was a stack of treasury editions. Now, I actually bought double the size of this stack, but for YouTube purposes, I think we can just go through half of it. Treasury editions. So if you're not familiar with treasury editions, they were something in the 70s that you would find. Uh, they did like kind of like a premium format. They're 11 by 14 or so, maybe a little bit bigger than that, 11 by 17. They were usually reprints just in large format with maybe new, you know, new covers. I, I have a fascination with them. I owned a couple when I was a kid. So now I'm on a mission to find as many as I can and keep the ones I really want. This gentleman had a stack, like I said, and probably about 30 total. And I made him an offer and he took it. I picked out the ones that I want to keep and the ones that I want to sell. And I'm just going to show you a nice little heap. So there's this Mighty Avengers number seven. Pretty sure that's a Jack Kirby cover. That's one cool one. This one was really dope, really, really tough to find. This is Ghost, True Tales of the Supernatural, DC Comics. So this was part of their treasury run. Beautiful cover by, I think it's Nick Cardi cover. Another one of the DC ones featuring a bunch of Neil Adams artwork. That's a Batman limited collector's edition. A really cool painted cover. Like I said, some Neil Adams artwork and a very classic Batman cover on the back. These treasury editions are all in super good condition for the most part. There was a couple that were in a little beat up shape, but I think this, in terms of rarity, Superman versus Spider-Man. I believe this is the first ever published team up. It's a pretty cool cover. It's a pretty cool book. This one might've been my favorite by title. Hulk on the Rampage. Hulk smash. Beautiful John Romita cover. It's in beautiful shape. It's the Hulk. What else could you ask for? Notably, most comic collectors will tell you how much they don't really care for Archie. They don't want to collect Archie. It's true for me too. A little bit beyond my time. I think if you grew up in the 40s, 50s, 60s, Archie spoke to you. And I'm not sure why. I was checking out all of these, opening them up, making sure the condition was nice. And so Christmas and Archie, I opened this up. And right here in the front cover on the first page, it's so Archie number 18. This book that I'm holding in my hands, 75 years old. It's from 1946. Archie looking like a super creep on there. 
it's pretty beat up. It's got some writing on it. But think about it. Like, this existed just after World War II. I'm holding a comic book that's 75 years old. Kind of wild. Some of my other favorites. I've passed up on buying this a few times, and I don't have to pass up on it anymore. This is the Mighty Thor. This is number three in the Treasury Edition. Beautiful, beautiful Jack Kirby cover. Beautiful Jack Kirby book. Everything you'd want from something this size and, and this character. Another Jack Kirby, Captain America's Bicentennial Battles. It's a beautiful cover. It's from 1976. Jack Kirby, Bicentennial, Captain America. What else do you need to say besides this wild back cover? I'm not sure what Uncle Sam's been doing. Illustrations in here. I mean, Jack Kirby, his style is unparalleled. So now we get down to the last five I'm going to show you. I've got some Spider-Man. This one is the Sensational Spider-Man, 1977, number 14. It's got some beautiful color to it. It's got a great cover. And it also has the reprint of Amazing Spider-Man 101, which is the first appearance of Morbius in here. And that you can see him in the bottom corner. Speaking of villains of Spider-Man and reprints, Spectacular Spider-Man Treasury from 1975. This reprints the first appearance and the pinups of the Sinister Six that you can find in Spider-Man Annual Number 1. Marvel Treasury Edition Number 2. Fabulous, Fantastic Four. That's a lot of Fs. There's some great Jack Kirby stuff in here, but more so the coming of Galactus, the first appearance of Galactus. So it reprints that in Treasury format. Check out that back cover, though. These just They're just beautiful. Look... They don't make shit like this anymore. I mean, the treasury editions and the, the oversized stuff that they make now is great. But if you want it on, on paper like this, on the newsprint type stuff, you got to go backwards in time. This is actually probably my favorite thing that I found for artwork's sake. So this is the winter edition of the House of Mystery, DC Comics Horror. Very cool cover, uh, but more so for the reason that there's some Bernie Wrightson art in here from 1973. Now, I didn't get to look through the whole thing but we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you the first piece of Bernie Wrightson art I found. Look at that two page pinup spread. Ah, oh, Kane by Bernie Wrightson. And then the next page, a Wally Wood story. And then after the Wally Wood story comes, this is unbelievable, Sergio Aragone's story, creator of Gru and Mad Magazine Extraordinaire. Just pages later, an Alex Toth story. So you get Wrightson, Aragones, Wood, and Toth all within few pages, and I still haven't looked through the whole thing. And finally, uh, most classically, the first Treasury Edition by Marvel, number one, The Spectacular Spider-Man by John Romita and Stan Lee. I was reading about this yesterday, and there were a thousand copies of this that were signed by both Romita and Stan Lee. So I opened this up yesterday to see if this was the signed edition. And on inside the front cover, just like that Archie book, was this very cool pinup from the Seattle Times in 1977, uh, John Romita Spider-Man. This is some cool reprints of Spider-Man from Romita, from Kirby, from Ditko, a little bit of everything in here. Yeah, this one's pretty special. It's, it's the first one. It's that classic cover, classic back cover. I think this is pretty sought after, but I'm going to hold on to this. I like these treasury editions, and uh, it'll be a nice little addition to the collection. Just displaying them or storing them is going to be an interesting task. I bought this collection kind of on a whim, but I liked what I saw, and it really paid off, uh, especially these treasury editions. Grabbed them. I looked at them briefly. I saw they were mostly in good condition. This Tales from the Crypt might be worth about $1,000, and so I was happy with what I bought. I'm going to be seeing the rest of his stuff in a few weeks. I just want to thank everybody for joining in on this YouTube journey, hanging out on the live sales. You can catch the Instagram and I also do sales on whatnot. The links will be down below in the link tree as well as the Mercari store and eBay store and the link to Dave Korea's website so you can buy some of his amazing art. Just want to thank everybody once again. I'm going to set myself a goal. I have another three weeks left in December and by the time you see this video, it'll be two weeks, but I'm going to ask everybody to repost, follow. I want to get to 500 subscribers. I'm halfway there. I want to get to 500 subscribers and 500 Instagram followers by the end of the year. And as an incentive, one of the books that I got this week will be given away for free. This is what if number one, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four. This is a very high grade copy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one person at random. Once I get to 500 on either of the socials, whether it be Instagram, whether it be YouTube, 
I'm going to give this one away for free. That's my way of saying thank you for this journey. And uh, please like, follow, subscribe, comment below. YouTube loves it when you comment. I love it when you comment. Let's talk. Let's do lunch. Have your people comment on my people. I like this shit. The West Coast Avengers getting stronger in 2022. Mysterious, uh, you know, beard anyway.